Hey everybody, Bob here and welcome to another Making Stuff video. I'm going to continue working on the mostly printed CNC machine, but first I just want to give you guys a heads up that I'm going to be at ThinkerCon November 17th in Huntsville, Alabama. So if you're going to be there, be sure and come up and say hi because I'd love to see you there. So I'm going to start out by fixing a mistake I made on the last video and that is these flat pieces on the corners need to be facing outwards and I've got them facing inwards. So I'm going to rotate those around but to do that I've got to take all these rails off and that's also a good time to fix another problem which is the rigidity of the frame. Now when I push down on this it doesn't really appear to move a whole lot but this span right here is 900 millimeters, which is about three feet, and it's a little bit longer than what they suggest on the documentation for, for building this machine without having to deal with some flex in here, and there is some flex. And I didn't think that it was really that bad until I put the dial indicator on there, so I'm gonna do that now and show you guys just how much flex there is in this. So I've got the dial indicator hooked up and I'm going to push down on this rail with two fingers about as hard as I can. And it actually hurts my fingers to push down on that for more than just a couple of seconds. And it's bending here on the dial indicator about 30 thousandths. Now I decided to look on Thingiverse before I spent the time to draw up my own solution to this problem. And sure enough, there's several uh, supports that you can download and print it yourself on Thingiverse. And the one I like the best is this one, and I will put a link to it in the description. It's just a support. It's got a hex hole on the back where you can just drop a nut in there like so. And then you take a piece of all thread or threaded rod, and you cut it to the length that you need so that it will come up to a little bit more than half the height of the uh, conduit. And then once you get your piece cut, you take this nut trap. Now I had to modify it a little bit because the hex hole in the nut trap wasn't big enough for this quarter inch nut. So I had to heat this up and then press it down in there. But you take this and then there's a hole on the end of it and you put a dowel on it and then you run this down the inside of your tube and you drill a hole in your tube and then when this lines up, you put your piece of all thread in here and then it's secured in place and then you pull your dowel out of the tube and then you've got this support that keeps the conduit from flexing both directions. So I'm going to take these corner pieces off, uh, take these rails off and drill the holes that I need to install this and then I will show you what it looks like when it's all finished. And here are the pieces installed. As you can see here, I've got the base right here. Then I've got this all thread and the nut trap is inside of the conduit. So all I have to do is really just twist this to get it to the height that I want. And then this nut here, I just tighten that down and then that sets everything in place. So I've got this all set up on all four rails. So let's put the dial indicator on there and see how much of a difference it makes. All right, so I've got the dial indicator all hooked up like I had before, and I'm going to push down this time with both hands, and I can just barely make that needle move, maybe a half a thousandth or a full thousandth. So this has really helped the rigidity of these rails, and it's taken all of the flex out of these outer rails. Now that the flexing has been fixed on the rails here, I have run some cables and 3D printed some more parts. And I just 3D printed this cable chain, uh, 3D printed a bracket to mount the cable chain to, and that bracket just runs through one of these bolts uh, for the uh, roller plate, and all that's held into place here. And the motor on the opposite side of this rail, the cable is run through the conduit over to the other side, and then where I soldered the wires from the cables to the motors, I've covered that, in this braided wire loom and I've got a link to that in the description in case you're interested in it. The next step I'm going to do is run the belts on the machine 
So this is the GT2 timing belt and you want to take your belt and loop one end off and then close it with a zip tie and that creates a loop for our second zip tie which goes in the slot here on our corner piece and then we'll run that zip tie through this loop and then that will close this end off here and you don't want to zip it completely tight here you want to leave some space so that there's room to adjust the tension of the belt once we get the other side mounted and on the motor I have mounted my GT2 16 tooth pulley and the belt will go underneath one of the bearings over the top of the pulley and then underneath the next bearing so that it makes a v-shape like so and you can see now that this is all hooked up and now I need to anchor the other side and on the opposite corner I have mounted the belt exactly the same way as the other side and for tightening the belt I've got it a little bit on the loose side but I've got a pretty good idea from uh, setting up the CNC plasma machine about how tight this needs to be but it's better to leave it a little loose and then tighten it through your zip ties than to get it too tight and then have to go back and cut a zip tie and start over again alright so I have gone ahead and wired this up off camera because I know how exciting it is to watch somebody wire something so uh, I've got it all wired up and I'm using a Rambo 1.4 board to power this now I've got the stepper motors hooked up there's two motors for each axis so I've got X and Y in the X and Y slot and then there's also a second motor for each axis and those are wired into the E0 and the E1 slot now I found out the hard way that this is not the way to wire up your board and your machine unless you're going to use the dual end stop feature if you're not going to use the dual end stop feature then what you're supposed to do is wire both motors to the same port so you just run both of your X motors to the X port and both of your Y motors to the Y port and then your Z motor which I don't have hooked up yet would of course go into the Z port so like I said I found out the hard way that's not the way to do it if you want to run each motor on its own port so if you use dual end stops you have to reflash the firmware to the dual end stop uh, firmware which is what I have done here now the advantage of running the dual end stop is that it will auto square the machine when you home it now this is the same thing that I did with the CNC plasma and I'll put a link to that video right here in the corner and you can see that uh, for the CNC plasma I'm going to do the same on this machine and that has worked out great on the CNC plasma and when I found out that the MPCNC would do this I decided yes I've got to have that feature here as well because on the plasma I only had one axis that needed to be squared well this machine there's two axes that need to be squared so I've got it all wired up I've got a 12 volt 12 amp power supply and then I've got the LCD here so let's power it up and let's see if we get any movement out of the machine alright so the machine is all wired I've got the power going to the board no magic blue smoke came out of anything so I believe this is ready to test the first thing I'm going to do is just see if I can move each axis and I need to check and make sure that both of these motors are spinning in the right direction so I'm going to start with the X which is this direction here and I'm going to tell it to move that axis 10 millimeters all right and it and it worked both of them moved in the right direction so now I'm going to dial it out to about say hundred millimeters and let's see what happens all right that's great so the X is all hooked up correctly so now let's try the Y axis and again I'm going to tell it to move 10 millimeters just to make sure both motors are set up right 
All right, that's great. They are. Both of them turned in the correct direction. So now I'm going to also dial this one out to about 100 millimeters. And that's awesome. That's great. Everything's working. It's moving the direction it's supposed to. So next I'm going to test these limit switches and the auto home feature. I'm going to go in here and tell it to auto home. Now what it's going to do, it's going to auto home both the X axis first and then the Y axis. And it's going to move both motors toward the switch until it makes contact with the switch. Then it's going to back off and then it's going to do the same thing again real slow so that it can get both of these uh, motors uh, in sync and squared and it'll square that axis and then it's going to do the same thing with this axis here on the Y. So let me go in here and tell it to auto home. Here we go. All right, so, okay, so the X worked. And so did the Y, so that's great. That, that's awesome, everything is, is all hooked up and wired correctly. All right, so that is all the time I have got for this video. So be sure to check the description where I have got links for all of the files. I've got links to the MPC CNC webpage, and I've also got links for all of the products and tools that I use in this video. Now, if you like the video, please give me that big thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, please subscribe and ring that bell so you don't miss any of the upcoming videos on this project. And thanks for watching. <music>